Per usual, being on this channel is for educational purposes only and not intended as financial advice. So let's talk about the Bitcoin. Let's talk about where, who's buying what everyone's selling at 18K, right? Who's buying 18.5? It's got to be billionaires and millionaires and gajillionaires. It has to be. That's the only way this keeps going up. Or we're doing some Bernie Sanders style stuff where we're getting, you know, 20 million $4 donations into Bitcoin through retail. And prices going up. We're seeing a little bit of both, honestly. It's probably more institutional FOMO than anything. Here's a great website, bitcointreasuries.org by NVK. It shows the holdings of kind of corporate institutional players in the game. Breaks them down. Publicly traded private ETF like there's actually way more private Bitcoin treasuries than listed here. Pretty much any older altcoin that did an ICO is sitting on a decent amount of BTC. Not 140,000 like block one, but a decent amount. Collectively, it would raise this number, I think, by a little bit. But overall, this is a good, a good start. And this uh, publicly traded stuff, we're seeing more and more of that come out every day. We're seeing more and more people, more and more millionaires and billionaires saying, you know what, it's a good idea to hold on to some of this Bitcoin stuff the kids are getting into. This might have a purpose, right? Finally coming around. Slowly but surely. PayPal's coming around. Everybody's coming around. If we go back to DeFi Pulse, look at BTC locked in DeFi. Another indicator worth watching because we are at 170 odd BTC. So it's basically like the equivalent of a block one treasury. It's not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but it's significant when the inflation is currently 1.8% for BTC. Like there's, again, there's not a lot of BTC for sale. And if we look at daily issuance is around 900 BTC and daily demand just on retail or pink sheet GBTC stuff collectively is about 2.6 K BTC. So this is part of the reason why price is going up. There's more buyers and sellers. It's always been that simple. It always will be that simple. We're seeing more and more places to buy BTC, PayPal. Cash App was early, GBTC, we're seeing a lot of that. There will probably be a lot of institutional selling before end of year for tax purposes, for balance sheet purposes, I'd imagine. All right, let's look at technicals. The real heat of the meat here, we are nearing the median line of the pitchfork. The pitchfork is three points and a projected rate of change from there. So currently for this specific time point, there's an expectation of 20k for price or thereabouts. You can see how we were ranging in this diag for a little while, several months. Broke above that. There's just it's like a ladder. There's an expectation now that we hit 20k. That's not me saying that. That's just the indicator. It is what it is, right? It's just at the end of the day, it's just a number. It might emotionally be insane, but it's just a number. If we look at the MA multiplier, this is the two-year MA multiplier, my, 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 my multiplier, 730 MA, two years, right here. This is on the daily chart, so that's the two-year MA. 5X, the two-year MA, is in the red up here. And so far, it's been pretty good at catching these tops relatively cleanly. You can see we've bounced between the midline and the top in 2017, and we broke above it. The moment we break below from the top side, the moment we break below the red line, it's game over. Historically, anywhere I've ever looked at this indicator on anything, it's very rare and or has never happened that once the top is broken, once the seal is cracked, that's it. So I'm definitely going to be extremely interested in how this looks over the next few months to years if we break above this red line. If we break below the red line, that is a big danger warning signal that the macro bull trend is over. Currently, we're approaching the midline around 20, 25.8, 26K. Again, just an indicator. I'm just reading the indicator. Historically, it has kind of exceeded the midline, retested the midline, I guess you could say, before eventually breaking above. So this top, top 44K is going to increase uh, over time so long as trend continues. Something else this hasn't really done, not a lot of history obviously, but it hasn't broken above the midline and then broken below 
reaching for uh, back for the two year MA. So basically, it's a full send. Once it once it increases above the midline, it's been a full send to maximum 5x 44k. In this case, 44k plus that'll keep increasing. Daily cloud plus 60 70 percent since the bullish TK recross above the cloud. I mean, what more do you want, right? Just <laughs> it sniped the bottom so perfectly, so obviously. It's it's this simple, folks. You don't trade the, when it's in the cloud. You trade when it's above the cloud. You watch for the, the signals. It's perfect. It's 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 so good, right? Like, how can you not use the cloud, these settings? I don't know, whatever. It's just me. Maybe it's just me, right? Maybe I'm the crazy one. But so far, it has been perfection as far as predicting an up move as it was here, as it was here. Are you going to get 60, 70% every time? No. But, wow. So right now where we're sitting, we are way overextended above the Tenkin, which historically speaks to a reversion in the near term. And we are definitely overextended from the Kijun. The good news is on the daily, there hasn't been this flat TK lines. So you'll see the TK lines spread apart over time, right? They'll continue to spread apart and then they'll eventually just stop and they'll get flat like this. When they get flat, that's the sign that there's probably a high probability of a top at that point in time. And then you'll get your mean reversion to the Kijun either slowly or quickly. <laughs> and if it's quickly, ideally it bounces from there. So what you want to do is put your bids, what I'll be doing, putting my bids on the Kijun, and these will keep moving up over time slowly until eventually it just flattens out. And you can see we started, you know, we started to get the, the flattening of the TK lines and that moved up again, and it moved up again, and it moved up to get up again. Eventually it'll stop moving up, right? If we want to move down a time frame, I had the 12 hour somewhere. If we want to move down the time frames, so this is the 12 hour, basically the singled cloud settings. Same settings, half the time frame. Again, you see the same thing, Kuma breakout, go long, whatever, yada, yada. We're bouncing on the Tenkin, bouncing on the Tenkin. Eventually, we'll stop bouncing on the Tenkin, right? And then we will test the Kijun, currently at 15, 8, 16 something. So if you had bids here, you could just keep moving them up. Just keep moving them up. Currently at 15, 8. Decent case for a TKC clamp here. Not like massive because the TK lines aren't getting wider spread apart, but you can see the cloud is getting thicker. That's always troubling. You want to see a thin cloud. You know, the daily looks so good right like compare and contrast this cloud to the current cloud when the cloud gets thick that usually indicates prices consolidating so the daily could theoretically keep going i don't i don't think that's the case at this point it's less of a probability than reversion mean reversion i'm not betting on bullish continuation up here looks a bit overextended looks a bit overextended and if we look at the weekly cloud I mean, again, what more do you want from an indicator? We broke above the cloud, Kumo breakout, go long. Like, I don't know, right? <laughs> uh, so anyway, cloud is mega bullish. 2021 is going to be mega bullish. We're, we will get a retrace to the Kijun at some point in time. Not in the near future. This may take 100 more days to retest this red line here. The red line will move up. It'll get flat. Same story as always. And we will get a retest. Um, if I'm measuring, if I'm looking for highs, right, I'm measuring this high to low in FIB extensions, and I get 19 to 23. If I measure this all-time high to this 2018 low, I get 30K to 36K. So I really think we don't exceed uh, 27, 25 on the first go-around. Just because we're, the buying here has been relentless it will have to get more relentless <laughs> for us to break that level so although this looks amazing right obviously on trend always more comfortable buying a pullback than just saying all right let's go long at every single high we see on the daily fractal settings if we're looking for stop losses currently the stop loss is around 12.8 which obviously you're losing a ton of profit if your trailing stop is at 12.8 but look how like textbook you couldn't draw a better trend than what these emas are showing just the low time frame emas are just 45 degree angle price looks great if you move down to the 12 hour and look for a stop loss a tighter stop loss we're talking 17.6 currently there's some arguments for a head and shoulders here on low time frames 
Um, but you can see that these stop losses kind of since the beginning, I don't think this, no, this didn't stop out. If a candle closes below the wick of the stop loss, then you're out. So you're going along here, stop, 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 moving up, moving up, moving up, moving up, moving up. Currently, 17.6 is a, a tight but appropriate stop loss based on the rate of change of this trend. And then kind of in the similar vein, if you're looking at the 1050 EMAs, just like a low, a low trend trade setup, it just looks like someone's just buying the, the 10 EMA every time it touches it, right? So if, if we break below the 10 EMA, I do expect a touch, a low touch. Maybe it's 15. You know, that's the 50 right now. It'll keep moving up. MACD's surging. RSI, kind of the highest, the longest it's been in a long time. We're talking like 2012. Look at the daily RSI. Just scroll back. It really doesn't stay above 70 this long. So something's definitely different this time. We can also look at the weekly 20 SMA for pullback. Again, it's at 12.5. I don't think we get that low. I think 15.6, 15.7, whatever this was here, 15.8. I really like the 12-hour key June. You have to adjust time frames if the price is moving fast. So I like 12-hour key June as far as a, a pullback buy potential. Something else that's a little troubling here currently is we are bear diving into a yearly pivot. We're on the R2 yearly pivot right now at around 18.5. So it really, it's really tough to long up here. It's really tough to long up here seeing that. This is the percent B on the bottom here. It kind of exaggerating that div a little bit, showing you that each day we are opening a candle less and less outside of the B bands, which says we have weakening bullish momentum. Volumes dipping. RSI is kind of on an island here as far as no bear div. Then lastly for the 5% of people that stick around for the entire video, let's look at the ultimate moon boy targets. We're talking 90k on the Bitcoin log growth curve. Historically, these have predicted the top perfect every single time. This will keep moving up obviously over time. We are currently not even close to the midline of the law growth curves, but wow, if we do continue, it'll be something. All right, that's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe. Hit me up on Twitter and happy trading.